Hello everyone and welcome back to Behind Massive Screens, a game development podcast here from uh, Massive Entertainment in Malmö, Sweden. My name's Dori and I am continuing my conquest of this podcast. As you can see, I'm moving slightly closer to the guest, pushing Petter to oh, the side. Oh crap, I didn't think of that. And uh, well, yeah, P- Petter is here. Okay, I'm out. Still. I'm out. <laughs> I, I'm still here. How are you, Dori? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. It's good. been uh, a fascinating couple of weeks. Yep. And... Uh, Lot to do. Check out the vlog, by the way. It should be should be out. True. And uh, yeah. Anything else? Any other news that uh, will completely date this podcast? Wait, let me check my NDA. Uh, no, nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> In a couple of weeks. I have a problem. Mm-hmm. I realized this morning. So we've done, we did 12, 13 episodes of the Fika sessions. And then we've done this. And we're roughly around episode 14, 14 15, yeah. somewhere. I'm running out of good t-shirts. Where oh. at the po- on the podcast. Yeah, it's the, not a problem for the audio listeners. Yeah, the for me content the morning, creator dilemma. Yeah, I have a few good left, but then I need to. And I don't think Massive's going to have expense. I can't expense to Massive. So. Ah, we'll, we'll give it a try. Yeah, we'll give it a try. But we have a guest. Yes, we uh, are joined here by Hanna Roswal. Did I, Hi. Did I slaughter that? Yeah, yep. no, it's, it's ah, all right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm Icelandic. I, I, uh, I'm excused. But... She is a user researcher <laughs> here at uh, Massive, uh, and um, I did a vlog on the Games Lab that was more focused on uh, the public who wanted to maybe become playtesters. Mm-hmm. But I am fascinated to hear more like the the data of it and the the deeper kind of dive for developers on on why that is a such an integra- in, integral part of game development. So I'm I'm excited. Yeah. What, what kind of science did they do on you? What kind of experiments did they do on you when you were at the Games Lab? Well, Is that what you want to find out? That's what you really want to know. Mm. I mean, what data do they have on you now? Yeah, th- somewhere they have my heart rate monitor and yeah. readings and, and stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's it. I was in that blog. I had my five seconds of fame in that blog. <laughs> 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 I was looking very serious, taking notes like, I see you guys. I know everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. But now you get your your hour of fame as we I as we know. dive into not just your uh, job role but but well you and your journey in the game industry. So Yeah. First of all, like how did you No, wait. We start with the role. You see, I'm I'm still taking over the podcast. I'm I'm not <laughs> I haven't quite figured out You want me to write it down? No, no, it's fine. Okay, fine. Okay. What does a ro- user researcher do? Well done, Dory. Um, user research <laughs> would be the short answer, but I like to see user research as like the spider in the web because we're connected to a lot of different teams and we're also the link to the player. So we're really close to the players because we, as we saw in your vlog, we bring people here to test our games and, uh, yeah, we bring insights to directors, design teams, everyone who's interested basically. So, um, so it yeah. really is like the, the actual like practical, what happens when a player actually mm. gets to play a certain game. Yeah. No longer yeah. theory. Yeah, exactly. And it's uh, in all stages of the game development. So it can be like from the very earliest, okay, we have something to play. Let's bring people here to play it. To we have a very finished game and we can do a full walkthrough so people can play it from the beginning to the end, basically. Yeah. But but the the first thing when I saw the game slip, I thought, oh, is this uh, quality assurance? But, but it's mm-hmm. not. It, this is a separate thing. Or, or do you do both? No, we're not looking for for bugs. Uh, I mean, there are different different people who do that very well. So, um, I mean, we bring people in, and we're really interested in their experience. So, I I listened to an interview with an architect once, and he said that he likes to bring people into the houses he builds to see how they interpret the space. And I I really like that quote stuck with me. And I think it's the same thing we're doing with games. So we bring people here, and we see how they interpret the space or interpret the game, because there are always like design intentions or we think that people could play or should play things in a certain way but they might not do it they might have a completely different interpretation and that's really what we're interested in so we usually say that you can't be a bad play tester like there's absolutely no judgment in how you play it's not like we're sitting there and you know oh what a noob how could they die (laughs) die there it's not about that at all like if if you die somewhere in a strange way uh and let's be honest we've all been there (laughs) um it's just interesting information for us honestly yeah maybe a little note to take down Uh, maybe we can have that tweaked a little bit 
Yeah, exactly. So we really bring like unfiltered information. Well, of course, because we get a lot of data from especially like a full walkthrough that can be six days. So people come here for six days and they play and we get a lot of data. So we don't just bring that to the design team like, here you go. <laughs> so we, of course, filter it, um, you know, to to bring the, the most uh, insightful information. But it's not like we have an agenda or we want to make people happy. Like, okay, let's say that they really like this. Let's <laughs> tweak the data so that it looks good. That's not what we do. We try to bring like the real user experience Um through, you know, we do surveys and uh, we have telemetry. So just gathering data from like under the hood. Uh, sometimes we do focus interviews or focus groups. I mean, and then we do observations as well. So we have many different data points that we can, uh, yeah, put together. Yeah, um, and, and, I, I, and I, I have to think, you, like you mentioned six days for, mm. for like a play test. But in order to hit all those metrics and making sure that you are having a spread out an even distribution of the type of players. I mean, that must be a, a long process before you even get close to the playtest. Yeah. Yeah, so we have a recruitment process and we don't... I mean, everyone is welcome, quote-unquote everyone. So, of course, we look at... We might want them to play a certain type of games, like, for example, open-world action adventures, because we're doing that kind of game and it benefits them to have that experience and also, like, the kind of data set um, of having played a certain amount of those games so they know you know compared to other games i've played how do i experience this particular game and we also want them to enjoy themselves um so that's kind of yeah we do some some filtering but we uh, um, like in terms of ages or genders or whatever like we that's more open. We really want to have all kinds of people, all kinds of experience levels. So you can be very casual or you can be a like, hardcore gamer and you're welcome to our playtests. I think there's a lot of, of listeners and viewers right now that are perking up. Like, I get to play video games for six days straight yeah, and yeah, tell yeah. people what I think about it. <laughs> no. This is the mm -mm. best. No, yeah, you, don't, you, you don't. Yeah, they get yeah, to yeah, tell yeah, you yeah us, what they do. But no, um, yeah, no. no others. Yeah. Don't. Like no, don't go on Reddit. <laughs> I know you want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Uh, no, so so everyone who comes here, of course, we're really, really conscious about, uh, you know, not having any leaks uh, because that will impact a lot of people who are working very hard on, on games. Yep. So all playtesters sign an NDA and they don't talk to each other either. I think that's the most, the hardest part during lunch breaks when they have something, they all have something in common, like they've been playing this game and they don't get to share their experiences with each other because we don't want them to influence um, each other. Like if someone's like, yeah, combat is so easy in the lunch break and someone else is like, yeah, well, I didn't have the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm. what, I, what I really like about it in general, we're going to get into even more of the details of what you've been talking about is it really is in a way like video game science because you, you mm. hear about focus groups to take people in. What do you think about our brand? What do you think about our TV show? Yeah. But you go much further than that, as you said, with telemetry and stuff, yeah. like really follow their journey in a much deeper way than just what do you think about this? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, telemetry, it's like recording the temperature in a way. So it's very neutral, like the weather won't have an agenda in what degrees it's outside and it's the same with uh, telemetry and it's very interesting for us because in a survey uh, or in a focus group an interview people might say one thing uh, yeah I really enjoyed this part of the game and then when we look at their their data their telemetry they might not have engaged with a system at all and right. it's like okay that's interesting um, so it's we try to do like a triangulation it's called so having different data points saying the same thing that's when we can trust the data so if we observe something we can see it in the telemetry we see it in survey results that's like okay this is a thing this is something we should bring to the design teams right it, it kind of <laughs> i'm just thinking back to you know when i was a kid playing nintendo and mm -hmm. i was yelling at the tv and my yeah. mom came in and like <laughs> why don't you just turn it off if it's me <laughs> no i'm loving it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just thinking in the accident interview, oh, I love the game. And then you look at the telemetry and it's just all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know some, um, I mean, they're they're polite, our playtesters. So we don't, I haven't seen any yelling yet <laughs> in the room, but who knows. But we see them 
And as you experienced as well, like we can see you while you're playing. So there's like, we can see the game and we have an eye tracker, which is like measuring your eye movement. So we can see where you're looking on the screen. Uh, we have a video so we can see your face. And there are some fun expressions there from time to time uh, from, and I mean, they vary. So sometimes someone might be dying for the 10th time and they're laughing and other, some someone else might be like really angry um, or really like emotionally impacted by the narrative or something. So it's, it's really precious to be able to see that like the real player experience yeah. and we all always encourage designers to come down to the lab to to take a look at that we don't allow them to go into the room and uh, stand behind players like no no go go there go there <laughs> uh but just seeing that because i think it's easy to get disconnected when you're like up at your desk and doing a game and programming or you know whatever you're doing yeah. designing mm. and and you're like this actually real people who are going to play this yeah, you've, you've played through the same section 20 times yeah, yeah. So you, can, you know how to, how to get through it yes yeah we're going to get back to uh, also how the games lab actually looks because it looks pretty cool uh but before that before we dive even deeper into all of these things um let's ask the second classic oh yeah wait DMS question do you remember i got this i got this so what, how has your journey been into game development? Like, how did you become a user researcher? Yeah, that was okay. The first one was better. You did that better. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> next week. No, oh, no, next month. Yeah. yeah. I think it was good. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Uh, See? I understood it right away. <laughs> just on my side. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to under, <laughs> undermine you <laughs> during the course of your takeover. Uh, uh, anyway. up, up, upvote or, or like, you know. Mm. If you're, you're sure. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should do like an A-B test. So you ask me the question. See, this oh, is the user research. Oh, my going. God. <laughs> we invited the scientists. Yeah. And, well, other other things in your background that are actually irrelevant to this. But, yeah, Dory's question. Back yeah. to Dory's question, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, my road to user researcher has been uh, paved with twists and turns. Like, I, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that I would be here. Um, and... The way I usually describe my career is that I've been working with brand stories and strategies since 2009. Um, so I, I like have these two sides of me. So I have one side that's very intuitive and creative and another side that's like analytical, strategic. And I've been lucky enough to combine those two during my career, which I didn't know was possible. Um, but I, um, I started at a brand and design agency. And uh, at the time, I didn't really know what a brand and design agency does, but I learned a lot of things. Um, and uh, so I got to participate in like everything from interior design projects to packaging design to brand strategies and, and, and all of that scope. Because I was uh, doing my bachelor's degree in marketing uh, at the university at the time. And uh, from there, uh, and I was also doing market research, which is kind of fun. So it's a fu full circle <laughs> coming out to user research. Uh, but I can use a lot of that uh, experience because I was like designing these interview studies and doing the interviews and uh, interpreting the the results and that that turned into brand strategies, which is very similar to what I'm doing today. But now I'm doing it for for games. Uh, it's, so it's when, fun. when you mentioned that during the the, the pre interview, with yeah. it just made perfect sense, kind of to, yeah. to bring that mindset and bring that background into this particular field. Is uh, I mean. In hindsight, it all makes sense because it feels like everything kind of led me here, although that sounds cheesy, but but it really feels like that. Um, so I um, I started marketing, majored in, in marketing at the university. And uh, when I was doing my bachelor's thesis, I got an internship at a brand and design agency. Wasn't really sure what a brand and design agency does, but it was uh, very fun and I realized that I'm quite good at it. And I've also always had like two sides to myself. So a very like, creative, intuitive side and then a more strategic, analytical uh, side. And I've been lucky enough to combine those two. Um, so, uh, and it's funny because at the Brand and Design Agency, I was helping out in these market research projects. So we would design interview studies and do the interviews and then analyze the results. And that turned into brand strategies, which is very similar to what I'm doing today. Um, so that's kind of uh, funny that I was doing that already in, in uh, 2009. Um, then I move on to a more like the creative team. So I was uh, in the wonderful world of advertising uh, for eight years. So I was a copywriter and creative lead and also a brand strategist. So again, like the, I don't want to say the he head and the heart, but, <laughs> but like <laughs> <laughs> more of the creative, just creating uh, and then uh, strategies. Um, then I, uh, I started my own company. 
So I was a freelance writer and I was working with uh, management teams to help them figure things out, doing workshops. And I was also teaching at the university uh, marketing. So so I've all like had this academic background like from my studies, but I've also kept in, in contact with my, my university. And, and uh, yeah, I've been fun to do some teaching there and, and meet some young minds uh, who have a different perspective on, on marketing. Then uh, there was a plot twist. My my husband co-founded a startup, so we moved to Sweden, and I had no idea what I was going to do here. But I continued with my company, and I got into the world of startups. So I was uh, working at an incubator for a while, and then I, I continued uh, freelance. So I was working with a lot of startups, and suddenly I was the CMO of a sustainable fo- fund that was a startup. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then I got my first steps into the, to the game industry. Uh, so, so the company that my, my husband co-founded was like, um, he founded together with psychologists. So it was like an adventure game for kids oh. to teach them maths. So it was based on, uh, 10 years of research. And my, my husband who's a designer and developer, he was like bringing the tech and the game side to it. Uh, so because I had a long background in creative writing, I was asked to be the narrative designer and I was like, I'm not sure what that is, but I'll, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> Sounds like fun. And it was kind of a dream come true for me as well to to create this, you know, mathematical world uh, and all the characters and write the dialogue. And I, I went really all in because I grew up with Lord of the Rings and I'm like, kids can handle like big lore and right, narrative. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was super fun. Yeah, then, th- that's yeah. kind of an aside though, but it's inter- what was it like to working with kids in that way? Like yeah games and kids well, that has to still like okay the, the big lore and stuff that mm. kids obviously can handle but yeah. it still has to come with a lot of challenges sorry side note but it's interesting <laughs> yeah no it was really interesting and and humbling as well um so i think the thing that attracted me to games like once i started doing it it was not too different from the creative projects that i had done in in advertising for example but it was a different thing to actually have people interact with the product and be in the game and they need to understand it and they need to stay engaged. And and I mean, kids are very honest <laughs> and quite harsh. <laughs> so we... The perfect playtesters. Exactly. Worse gamers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, and that's actually where I got in contact with Massive as well because Massive was helping out uh, with the game which was very appreciated and we got to do a play test in the in the lab mm. so so i was standing there and uh and i thought it was really cool and little did i know that i would actually be working <laughs> there <laughs> um this feels right yeah this feels <laughs> right. like i wonder um everything led me here i'm telling you <laughs> um nobody was very cool to see kids because we had had some kids come in like every now and then and then play the game but being there on the other side, because we have this kind of interrogation room set up where we have this one-way mirror uh, and we can see them and seeing the kids, like some of them were struggling and some of them were st- thriving. And it was like, yeah, it was a bit n- nerve wracking. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, will you like, do you like it? Um, nobody was, it was really cool. Um, and I, I realized that I, I, I wouldn't be in, in, uh, in gaming because I really like seeing Massive here and, and being able to be on this little like project uh, adventure game. It, it sparked something in me. So when this opportunity came, um, this user research position, I was like, yeah, I could do that. Um, and I also think that I got to a, a crossroads somehow. Like I was feeling done with marketing. I don't know. I had some kind of existential <laughs> crisis. I was like just looking at ads and, and, and logos and everything. Like, like, does any of this make any sense? Like, I don't know. <laughs> was, uh, I, was, I was just, yeah, I got to a point where I, I um, felt like I could co- continue like climbing the marketing ladder and, and, and that career path, or I could do something completely different. I was like, this is my chance to do something completely different. Um, so I came here for, for an interview and I think I was a bit of a wild card um, in the recruitment process because I haven't been in AAA um, games or I don't, I mean, I have a lot of transferable skills, um, which was the feeling I had and it has been confirmed. So I'm happy about that. I had a bit of an imposter syndrome at some point. <laughs> I was like, who am I, this marketing person coming in here, uh, working with games? But it's um, it's been super fun. Um, and um, yeah, everything led me here and I feel like I'm in the right place. It sounds like the market research thing really fits still. It's, mm. it's different, of course. We talked about focus groups and telemetry and stuff yeah. before, but 
it still, when we had the pre-interview, it just made sense somehow mm. to, to have that background and bring someone in uh, that can analyze that side of the yeah. things. Not really brand analysis mm. in this case, but still how people interact with worlds and interact with characters and stuff. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, it's not that... I, it's different worlds, of course, but in advertising as well, like I'm taking something and creating it and... Uh, like in the form of a campaign or whatever it might be, so that someone wants to interact with it. Like the user has always interested me. Um, and again, thinking back, like it, it makes sense because I've been doing this in, in many different forms, but it's it's very similar to what I'm doing today. Um, and I also think that it's, um, it's a good thing that I've been like in the creative team myself because I feel like I know how designers think or I know how to, to interact with them, not like... I don't know, it maybe sounds like, you know, you need to know how to talk to designers. It's not, it's not what I mean. I just mean that I maybe have a mindset from being in the creative team myself. Yep. Uh, so I can relate. So moving over to kind of from from your background, that's been really interesting, over back into the more details mm. of, of uh, games tasks and how the game lab is set up and stuff. Uh, to start out, kind of like on... Uh, Going through everything, really brief. Like, how does a user test look? What what's the cycle look like? Where does it start? Where does it end? And uh, where does it go from when once you're done? Yeah, um, it's interesting that you said cycle because that's actually how we work. So it's a lot of um, doing the cycle over and over again with the research. And the test really starts with. I mean, we usually schedule tests in advance just to be sure that we have access to the lab and and everyone is available, etc. Um, so we plan ahead and we ask the design teams, like, is there a feature you want to test? Is there an area you want to test? Or are we in some projects, you know, ready to do a full walkthrough? And that kind of determines, is it a two hour test? Is it a three day test, six day test, like whatever the time frame? Uh, and then we start designing the study. So we have some questions that we want to answer. We know how many players we're going to get here. Sometimes the test might be in several countries at the same time so that, you know, requires some sync with uh, with other labs that we're working with, um, sometimes across different time zones. So uh, it's really cool to be able to do that. You know, technology um, is, is awesome. So we start designing the study. And if we're going to do surveys, we design the surveys. If we're going to do interviews, we pr- prepare the questions and, and like a script uh, for the whole whole test or like a protocol. So, you know, players come here, we do this and this, and then we do this and this and... Um, what the, the test will look like. And uh, then it's the test itself, uh, and players come here, and hopefully everything works as we planned. Uh, we got a lot of data, and sometimes we need to adjust mid-test if something you know just happens. Um, or we get um, a request to, could you actually focus a bit more on this? Um, so, I mean, we have a plan, but then we also need to be able to improvise if needed. Uh, when the test is done, we have... Again, a lot of data to analyze. So we get started with that and then we write a report. Um, And that can be long or short, depending on, again, what the test was like. If we had a lot of insights or just a few insights. Um, And then we present it to the team. So we usually have like a debrief session where we, you know, talk them through the results and it's possible for them to ask questions and and all that. Um, So that's like basically the, the basic user research cycle. Um, yeah. yeah, and when when you like write your report, are, are you are, is it usually that um, you're looking, for example, you, you're testing an area in a, in mm. a game? Uh, does the design team come with? Oh, we want to know what they think about this specific thing, or is it just you let the players into the area and then you report it back to the des- design team? You know how how it was experienced. That was not a very good well phrased question, but I think you know. Go, go yeah, on. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, sometimes it's very specific. Like we will just test one system in the game, uh, and we might uh, create the experience for the player in a way. So I mean, because we're developing the game, we have some some possibilities to just uh, send them through a, a portal or just like put them here in the game, and then we put them here in the game. Um, So we might create an experience where we want you to go to this place and do X and then we want you to go to this place and do Y and then we just like test that in a very focused way. Um, If, you know, the the small of the test 
or the most more focused, the more focused questions we have as well. Just like we're looking at these five things. Uh, if it's a full walkthrough, we're looking at basically everything. Um, so then we're interested in, yeah, basically everything. So those reports are usually very extensive <laughs> <laughs> because we want to know everything and report as much detail as possible to the design team. Yeah. You, you did talk about it before, um, but still like to dig into it. Like, because we're always essentially looking for play testers yes. uh, at Massive. It's a it's a constant thing. We have posters. We have uh, social media posts. We have yeah. on the website. We have requests coming in from Games Lab all the time on the communication side of things. Massive.se slash playtest. There we go. There's a link in the description. But what people, we already kind of covered this, but mm. let's dig into it again. What kind of people are you looking for when they apply? If you're listening to this and you feel like I could be a play tester, then you're sign up. Like you are a play tester. I promise you. There we go. Uh, it doesn't matter if you play once a week or once a month, uh, or if you play Dark Souls with a like Guitar Hero controller, or, or if <laughs> like you Dory play. Does. Right. Do I you? wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> or if you play like something. I don't know. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like we are honestly not interested in your skill level. I think many people might be a bit nervous to sign up. Like, you know, it's not a test. We're not assessing your skill level. We're just assessing your experience um, and not even assessing. It, it sounds like a test again, but it, we're just interested in your experience. So it can you're, actually you're be good. Observing their experience. Uh, uh, yes, observing mm. the experience. Exactly. I guess, <laughs> I guess it can even be good to have people that are quote unquote bad uh, at video games, like not very yeah, experienced. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, and I think it's really interesting. Like um, sometimes in a play test, we can see that someone is really struggling with combat, for example. And it's so cool to see the, the learning curve as well. And that's um, interesting information to give to the design team. Like this person was struggling, but actually the game was teaching them how to mm. be fairly good at combat or they kept struggling all the time. And on the third day they were like, I want to go home because this is too difficult. <laughs> like none of that, again, no judgment. All of that is good information um, for us. Right. Yeah. And so, so when people sign up for a play test, they don't sign up for a specific play test. They s- sign up to be in the pool of play testers mm. that you then yes. choose based on their profile. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people would like to sign up for certain play tests, uh, <laughs> but we don't. They don't know what game they're gonna play until they come here, and we're like, "Congratulations, you're gonna play!" Um, and then they, yeah. yeah, find out. Yeah, but if you do want to play test a certain game, if you don't sign up, you definitely won't play it. That's a very good <laughs> That's point. That's smart. So <laughs> That's actually yeah. And I want to say too that you might be invited back uh, for a play test. So if you do one play test. Um, we might not be able to um, invite you back for that particular game. Like sometimes we do. Sometimes we want players who have been playing a certain game to come back because it's like, uh, you know, under construction. Um, so, uh, but then if you played that game, we might invite you back f- to play another game. So like stay in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess you might invite somebody back to try a certain section again to see... Mm if the reiteration in the design process has yeah. actually benefited and, and made yes. it easier for them more. Yeah, totally. So what? how does it, when people come in, you don't see the reception that we see from, from <laughs> here through the window, um, but they come in, they go to the lab, which is over there for your information. Um, what What are the first things they see when they come in through the door? Like what's the user experience or the player experience coming to the lab? Uh, well, they see a uh, coffee machine, free drinks and snacks. Uh, well, there we <laughs> so go, I'm sold. <laughs> that's like, I uh, hope that's a good good first impression. Uh, we have quite a comfy kitchen area as well. Um, and then that's basically all they see. Yeah, and then the rack where you put your phones, because you're yes. not allowed mm-hmm. to bring your phones in. No phones, no watches or anything you can record with. So we're kind of, uh, yeah, we're very strict about that. Um, and then they walk straight into the the room where they're going to spend, you know, everything from two hours to a week. So um, they carefully select their seat. You know, it's important <laughs> to have the right seat. Um, <laughs> and uh, then they have, so we've set everything up. They have like a notepad so they can make actual notes with pen and paper. Um, 
and they have the the controller and uh, the computer and usually the game is open or a survey if we wanted to, them to do a survey before they start so it, they just uh, yeah sit down and get started yeah. and we usually try to let them play with as few interruptions as possible unless right. it's a test where we're like okay now we're gonna go here and let me come back and put you in another place unless, uh, unless you're doing the parent test yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> And then and there's a, they also have like a a, um, a a stream deck to like say I believe to like say yes or no like positive experiences mm. right I, I, like yeah. I saw it when I was doing the vlog and I was like oh, yeah you figure can, out what that is you felt like you press that you yeah you got, yeah you press yeah. all the buttons yeah, I was having press a good time so I was like yes 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 <laughs> what does this button do <laughs> no <laughs> um, yeah we use that uh, sometimes. So they can like if because sometimes things happen quick in a game and they're like oh I really like that or I didn't understand this they have a option to to press the button and let us know. Does anyone feel intimidated coming in? Or is just so relaxed that of course you have the coffee machine you have free snacks you were just there how did it feel for you Dory coming in? I felt uh, quite relaxed. You work here though, so true, true. <laughs> but I mean, of course, if you want to see the game games lab and uh, kind of how it functions, sh- should watch the uh, the vlog that I did on that. And basically, everybody that I talked to of the uh, the people playing, they were very very relaxed, and they praised the food, they praised the uh, the <laughs> atmosphere, and uh, the way they were treated by by the the staff. So everybody was like really positive. And then I asked, like, and so what have you been playing? And everybody. Was, it's like stop no, no. immediately. <laughs> oh, no. No. Yeah, you, you tried. You tried to get <laughs> some <laughs> some nice. <laughs> yeah, no, but we uh, they also get free lunch, so we we try to create a really like relaxed uh, Friday Friday evening uh, atmosphere, and you know just yeah just hang out with the playtesters. So we have lunch together, and we uh, talk about games and life and everything. In, you know. Yeah, I guess creating that kind of relaxed, natural mm. uh, atmosphere is incredibly important to get yeah. the playtest to actually yeah. work or be natural at least. Yeah. Yeah, and it feels like sometimes they make friends among each other. And I mean, we, we all love games. Uh, there, so so it's it's something that's that we have in, in common. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, but I think it's important that they feel welcome and that they feel like they can be themselves and they can ask anything. Like there are no stupid questions. Um, I know that's also a bit of a cliche, but it's it's true. Like if you're stuck, put your hand up, ask us, and again, there will be no judgment at all. We just like okay, let's see, let's uh, see what you're. Yeah, going it, it's part of the observation. Yeah. 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 Speaking of observation, there's one thing that actually, and now it's probably because I work here and I know what it looks behind the scenes. Uh, it's that you talked about that one way mirror. Yeah. That's, <laughs> The interrogation room mirror. Yeah. And I know that you're sitting behind on your computers watching. Uh, That feels a bit intimidating to me. Mm. Am I Uh, being a wimp now? I mean, when you're in the room, you just look yourself in the mirror. Who's watching? I I think you forget about it quite quickly (laughs) when you're you're playing a game. I mean, Mm. I can forget about just about anything when I sit down after 10 (laughs) minutes to play a game. That's true. I don't think think that's a real big issue. Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah. it's for you, yeah. It's, it's yeah. because I that's work me here taking over the podcast, shooting yeah. header down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to the games lab to play video games instead of doing this. Um, but how does it actually look behind the scenes? Like, what is on the other side of that one-way mirror? Uh, a lot of screens. Yep. Where we watch a lot of screens, like screens within screens, <laughs> because we have a we stream all the screens, the player screens, and we can see them there, and that's just. Um, for us to keep a, a track of them instead of us being behind their shoulders like, yeah. don't mind me, which would be even <laughs> creepier, I think. With, or, a, with a notepad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking, mm. looking like uh, in that uh, vlog. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I, I don't know. Like, Would you prefer that, Petter, to have me behind your back? Like, um, That'd be probably be even more scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, honest, I think it's natural to feel a bit self-conscious, like someone is watching me and like I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, I feel like most people forget about it, and they know it's it's just us, it's just them, you know. Um, and yeah, the, uh, the nice people the that nice gave people. us coffee and food. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, then, then <laughs> just left. Yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, sometimes playtesters can be like, "Oh, I died in such stupid ways. Like you must have laughed at me," and then we're like, "No, we didn't. Of course, we didn't laugh at you." And then, uh, then you know, it's. 
I think just to to hear that because I understand that it can be a bit creepy. Someone watching you, you're gaming, yeah. and I mean, often people are gaming at at home alone or with their partner or their dog or whatever, yeah. and it's like, yeah, I mean. It's human not to want to do mistakes or look good or, but we really, really try hard to create the atmosphere of, you know, we uh, do stupid things in games too. And it's okay. Yeah. And we won't laugh. It, it kind of would feel natural for me having friends that were just like standing um, behind me, backseat driving. Yeah. I mean, like you suck at this. <laughs> well, when you were talking about people watching you playing, I just got flashbacks to when I started streaming because I used to oh, stream yeah. every single oh. day for, yeah. for two hours. Uh, and uh, th- that those first couple of months were rough because I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had the division community watching me play. <laughs> I think w- one of the, the biggest uh, memories I have is someone writing, "You big noob, better." <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Welcome to streaming. Anyway, yeah. Uh, th- 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 there's right one now. thing that I I forgot to uh, touch upon because you mentioned you were working sometimes with other labs in other countries. Yeah. Of course, uh, with your previous project, Massive helped uh, you play test here. Mm. And of course, Massive Entertainment being a part of the Ubisoft family. It's not just Massive Entertainment games that are being tested in the games lab. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we get other games uh, too. So we, I mean, we help each other out. And that's really cool to be a part of the Ubisoft family. And there are some amazing games being made. So it's... uh, yeah, it's very cool. And also the experience just in this building of, uh, of people doing all kinds of games. Like I was uh, I was talking to someone um, and I uh, I told them that I was playing Assassin's Creed Origins. And they were like, yeah, I, I was in the team that made the pyramids. And I was like, I was in those pyramids yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very cool. <laughs> but where do you, would you see kind of going into, I think just telemetry. Mm. Uh, speaking, I'm jumping back mm-hmm. in my own brain. Yeah. Um, what kind of telema- telemetry do you use exactly, and how how does that influence the test? How does that come into play? So I I don't know the technical details of it. I have very uh, skilled colleagues who know exactly how <laughs> how it works. Uh, no, but we record all kinds of things, yeah. like where do players die, or what kind of weapons do they use, or what kind of systems do they engage with. Um, you know, all, all kinds of things that everything that can be measured, what what quests are they tracking or completing or what side quests are they finding or not finding? Like sometimes data that isn't recorded is also interesting, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah OK, no one is finding this side quest. Like, can we do anything about it? Um, yeah. So we're I guess the, the sky is the limit for what can be be tracked. Yeah. And then there's things like, you know, like you mentioned, eye tracking, there's a uh, heart rate monitoring. And I believe uh, somebody mentioned to me while I was filming the vlog in the games lab, emotional arousal as well. So it's it's not just in-game telemetry, it's actual player telemetry. Indeed, yes. Uh, so, I mean, telemetry, it's data from, from the game experience, but then we have what's called biometrics. So it's the, the eye tracker, you know, where are you looking? And that might be interesting because sometimes there are these tips popping up uh, in the game, like, uh, did you know that you have this weapon or have you, you know, done this and that? And uh, those tips, if we see that players aren't looking at them, then we might uh, bring that information to the design team and maybe we need to, you know, change the position or the timing. Like if they get a tip at the moment when they're ambushed by enemies, like they might focus on the enemies and not the friendly reminder (laughs) um yeah but we can also measure uh galvanic skin response which is kind of a lie detector thing uh and then there's also something called eeg where we can measure brain waves almost in uh, real time so there's some very cool things that can be done uh in the realms of biometrics and again um like on the theme of things that led me here i uh, i wrote my master's thesis about how uh, neuromarketing and how brain research can be used as a part of the design process. And I kind of went all in with that. So it was like 200 pages and just, yeah, I'm happy that my professor had had the patience to see that through. (laughs) But it was so interesting and it's um, very motivating for me that it's something that I can like kind of start digging into again um, here because there's, I mean, as I said, we we use different data points, telemetry and the players reporting their own experience through surveys. And we might do interviews and the observations and we put all the data, those data points together. But there's like someone once said that um, 
in the tales of our inner lives, we've all always been unreliable narrators. And that's a thought that's like haunting me <laughs> because <laughs> there's always some kind of bias. Uh, like when we fill in, a, fill out a survey or answer an interview, like no matter how comfy the situation is in the lab, like I trust you, I can be real with you, like people might still filter things. Mm. Um, and we're, we have good methodology, we have good methods so we can get reliable data, but th there's just like, you know, that extra, uh, going that extra mile to uh, measure brain waves, for example, or biometrics that's subconscious, that's something that we can't, it's just happening, you know, uh, it's our body communicating. So I find that super fascinating. I'm not sure if I'm, I, I, I'm loving it or I'm being afraid of terms like neuromarketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like beam, beam the brands into my brain. Yeah. Mm. There are, um, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> there, are ethics, uh, there are ways. No. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, of course we need to have a discussion around ethics and, yeah. and all of that. But it's from from research point of view, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, okay, this is like going into the, the bra brain <laughs> realm. But our brain has like a hierarchy. So number one is life supporting functions like breathing, heartbeat. Number two is our sense of balance. And number three is our emotions. So the emotions are like very high up on the brain's um, hierarchy list. So our emotional reactions um, influence a lot of what we're doing. And that goes, we want to think that we're in charge and that we have, you know, control and we are humans and we are thinking, you know, um, but actually, research shows that it's like ninety-five percent uh, of our brain capacity, or brain, um, <clears throat> just the works of our brain, we are not conscious of. Yeah. So it's five percent. Some research even say it's one percent. So wow. it's a lot of things we don't know. And I want, like, I want to find ways to tap into that <laughs> <laughs> unknown. And I like totally get that it might be creepy, but again, it's it's interesting. And like, mm. can we find out something more? I don't think it's the solution to everything, but just having that alongside other research methods is something that I want to explore in the future. Let's do a full episode on the brain of a gamer, I think. Mm -hmm. We'll invite Hannah back and that's all we're going to talk about for 50 minutes because <laughs> I want to hear more about this. Yeah, so so which gamer is going to... Uh... We're going to do a live stream of you. We're going to put things <laughs> on you and then you're going to play a game. I was afraid it was going to come back to that. It's always going to come back. To it's that. always the first one that says you. I, I was I was <laughs> waiting for my chance to say it was going to be you, but yeah, you, you, you got in just, there first. You should learn more of the undermining <laughs> stuff I tried before. Um, but it, speaking of, of that kind of leads into the question, where do you see the future of kind of user research and in, in focusing on video games in this case? Is that where you think it will go naturally? Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit biased because I'm so interested in this particular area, but I really think that it's the the subconscious processes, like the between the lines and and the, the things that we can't just like ask someone, like what did you think, and then you give me an answer. But what's behind that? Um, and maybe that will teach us something new. Because again, as I said, someone might say something in an interview or in a survey, and then the telemetry might show something else. Like what could biometrics show? as another layer of that experience. And when we put all those pieces together, like what might we, we learn? Yeah. Um, to get the full picture. Yeah. So for the coming back, this has been fascinating uh, to hear about this process. But what would you, people at home, I think again, we've, we've covered some of it, but people at home watching, they're going, I want to be a, be a play tester. Mm. What kind of, anything you want to tell them straight away? Like just apply now. Yes, just sign up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, I, I think you summed it up pre pretty well, Dory. Like if you don't sign up, that's 100% not being able to play play any games. Yeah. No, but it's, um, I mean, I think, I think it's a cool experience to have, to be able to test a game that's under development because there might be, you know, some placeholders and, and we bring in people fairly early, I'd say. Um, just because we want to have real players, like we don't want to sit with with our games like until it's really pretty and looks and and then we might need to to change uh, something. So we bring in people pretty early, and we really appreciate that people have the mindset of you know 
yeah, I don't, I don't. It's okay if it's a robo voice or if it's a placeholder or I interact with a box instead of you know. Um, so it's a cool experience, I think, to having your like set of gamer experiences, and then you can go back to playing Elden Ring or something. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then definitely the heart rate going up. <laughs> yeah. and, but and somebody that wants to apply, do is there any sort of prep that you need to do beforehand, or is it just you just show up as you are? I guess, yeah, that's what you want. Um, I mean, we ask you to to do a, a survey um, just because we need some background information. It's a part of the recruitment process. Uh, but other than that, like you don't need to prepare for the the game itself. You don't need to game f- or play five hours a day to be like prepared and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know you just show up as you are. And well, we'll, you don't uh, know which game you'll be playing exactly. Anyway, so. Yeah, so you don't uh, you know researching the lore and everything. That's like no. But if you're really interested in playtesting, I guess, uh, for massive entertainment, of course, if you want to come to our lab here, you kind of need to be close by to to Malmo, preferably, unless yeah. you really want to travel far. Yeah, because that's the thing. If we're doing a test that's a week, you need to be able to be here for the full week. Yeah. Um, and just for your own comfort, like if you have a five-hour commute, that might not be a nice journey to do every day. Um, And then you're already tired once you sit down to play. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And they play, usually it's from like, um, you know, five hours a day approximately that they get to play games. So it's uh, it's full days. Yeah. And then you should probably research if there's a games lab close to you. And you might be able to sign up for that. And I just just want to add one little thing that uh, should entice you to become a playtester, and that it, as someone who has signed so many NDAs and gotten to know stuff before it goes public, it's kind of good to have a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can walk your head high amongst your friends and like, oh yeah, I know. Uh, sorry, you, sorry, can't say. <laughs> you don't know, but I know. <laughs> Just a little extra bonus. True, very true. <laughs> Sold. Thank you so much for coming, Hannah. Thanks it's for having me. Been really interesting. Really enjoyable. Yeah. And, uh, and, and and a subject that I want to learn so much more about as well. Yeah. But you just want to go back and play more games. Okay, well, true. Right? I just want to sit in the game. Lab. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Um, thank you very much for watching slash listen, like, subscribe, uh, all of that stuff. Leave a review. And sign up to become a place tester. Ma- massive.se slash playtest. See you here. Maybe. Bye. Bye. Bye.